The Open University has engaged itself in organizing and presenting programs on various topics to sensitize the legal and non-legal people to know about the various aspects or the basics of Mauritian laws. Today the topic that has been chosen is what is a constitution, which is a very basic thing for all of us as citizens of a country to know. We got to get the various essentials to understand what is a constitution. Then the first thing is that it defines the system of a government in a country. What does it mean? Before a government comes into existence, a constitution is written which defines the system in which the government is to function. For instance, whether it is a democratic government, a semi-democratic government, or it is an autocratic government, in all its aspects, the system is defined in a very clear manner. So we call a constitution to exist before a government is formed. And what is a constitution again? It is made up of a collection of rules to regulate the machinery of the government. So the government that has been formed through elected, the elected representatives that would be actually making policy in the parliament, before this comes into existence, the constitution set the rules to regulate the machinery of the government. Which are the machinery of the government that we are actually making reference to? One is the parliament, which makes the rules. The second is the executive that execute policies and the rules or the policies that have been put for execution by the parliament. The third is the judiciary. The judiciary is that organ of the state which actually is the custodian of the law. It defines and gives the proper definition of the law and its interpretation so that the implementation is fair, reasonable and valid. So this is a very important aspect once a government is formed and we have got its various machinery, the constitution is the one that devolves power, that provide empower the various organs of the state to operate. And this is a very important aspect of the function of a constitution. Then we have got the constitution defines the powers and sets the limits to those powers which can be exercised by those machinery of the government. The definition of powers is very important as we see in any constitution or any contract or any document that we sign they are actually, it has got a boundary, a limit, it has got certain powers that we, it gives to certain authorities. So those powers are defined. Now, for example, in our, in our context, what we have got, the limits of the powers have been defined to the parliament in the sense that the parliament cannot, besides making laws, cannot adjudicate, cannot execute. That is the definition of the powers. The executives will only execute those policies and the judiciary is limited to its power not to make laws except the case laws, but it cannot, as in the parliament, to initiate lawmaking. It cannot engineer changes in the legal system unless 
It has made some decisions that reflect on how to exercise in a way to regulate the conduct of the human behavior in a civilized society. So this is how it defines those powers. When we come to the definition of powers, we have got many, many authorities, ministries, corporations that the constitution creates. We have got public corporations. Those corporations have been created, have been given proper definition in our constitution. For example, the office of the president, the office of the director of public prosecution. And then we have got the, the, the office of, of various other, you know, important, like for example, the commissioner of police. All these are constitutional set, you know, uh, you know, positions that are enshrined in our constitution. So it defines their powers and sets the limit to those powers. They are not limitless. They are limited to certain extent that they cannot carry out a function beyond the powers that have been given to them. Otherwise, as we call it, it will be ultra virus. It is against the law. We are going to take maybe at a later stage this power of public corporation or a statutory body to make decisions. Those decisions should be made in a way that it is valid, fair and reasonable and it has followed procedures. So this we are going to take at a later stage but this is where the powers of those statutory bodies or statutory institutions, it sets the constitution sets limits to those powers, which can be exercised by the machinery of the government. So in one way, it defines the powers as well as it limits the powers of those statutory body or statutory organization created by the constitution. Therefore, the constitution defines the manner in which the powers of the machinery of the government can exercise and how it may exercise. Two things. One is the possibility of doing it, which it has been empowered to do. Power has been devolved on those institutions to carry out their, 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 their program of work. Next is that what they may, which means it is something that they can at their discretionary power. So public bodies are also given discretionary powers to perform the exercise what they have been given under the constitution to perform. So when we talk finally about a constitution, it is about legitimacy to a government and its legal status. When you talk of legitimacy, legitimacy in terms of what? Legitimacy will be lawful, that is according to the law. When a country is formed and it has got a recognized constitution, a constitution accepted by the people, they have voted for it, they have accepted the terms and conditions of the constitution, then the government that is formed, obviously, it becomes a legitimate government. A government that is recognized by all institutions in, in, inside the country and outside the country. So international recognition is a very important step, which means that the international organizations, which we are going to take later, what would be those international organizations, We'll be talking about how a government becomes legitimate. But therefore, the first step towards that legitimacy is to write up a constitution. In all what we have said about a constitution, it's mainly rules and regulations that would actually give powers to various organs of the state to carry out their functions and what they can have the discretionary power to exercise those powers within the limits of the law so that it remains a valid, fair and a reasonable country 
in which everyone is respected, the rule of law is respected, and everyone gets what is beneficial in terms of human rights and freedom. So in this way, the Constitution is a very, very essential and very important document that we need to have to get a country to assume a legitimacy, to assume a legal status, which gives us uh, the Constitution of Mauritius, as we have got it now, is a very important document that we all need to know what is a constitution before we go to the next topic. Our next topic will be the constitution of Mauritius by itself in its definition so that we know what the section 1 of the constitution of Mauritius states. For example, it gives a very broad definition of Mauritius shall be a sovereign democratic state. So in our next topic, we'll explain what do we mean when we say that Mauritius shall be a sovereign democratic state. So therefore, our next, next topic will be this very important uh, idea that we are going to share. What is sovereign? What is democratic? And what is a state? Thank you very much. Until next time.